Hello everyone welcome to the tech podcast series this is Lakshit Pan from Azure Developer Community and with this tech podcast series our idea is to bring the innovations and all the visionary leaders and you know all these business leaders and business decision makers to invite them and learn from their experiences try to grasp what they are building where is the current market future trend and where we are heading to in each episode of these tech podcast we are we are deeping dive into multiple dynamic you know realms of the technology bringing your thought you know provoking discussions with industry experts and for the same today we have our so we have our industry speaker mr satya sir with us who is the cto at infra dot market and we will try to learn from his experience and so if you could first introduce yourself first of all thank you uh, lakshit uh, thanks for having me on your podcast um you know as you introduced uh, my name is uh, satya Uh, I am uh, the chief technology officer at uh, Inframarket, and I've been with Inframarket um, since uh, uh, December 2019. Um, and, and from there, I handle everything related to technology at Inframarket. So, sir, to start off, if you could, you know, provide some and a uh, basic thirty thousand feet overview about the Inframarket's mission and how it's 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 working in you know the construction industry and with. you know context solutions if you could help us with a little bit about the brief so i mean as you can see uh, the wall making behind me right so uh, you know in effect uh, you know simple uh, infra market's purpose of existence is to um, you know change the way the construction material uh, industry ecosystem is operating through innovation and through technology right um no what does it mean is construction material industry has been there for a very long time it's not that we are creating a new industry it's a, it's a fundamentally existing industry it's been there for decades centuries right now um, there are a lot of opportunities to um, improve this efficiency of this ecosystem right um, to paint a picture of this ecosystem um, you know in any uh, industry um like like any other domains uh, in construction material industry also we are um you know made up of manufacturers for example they are the primary producers of uh, the material and the goods that we use you know in any construction activity um we are all very familiar with it because let's say we use extensive amount of uh, cement concrete we use steel we use uh, bricks of different kind whether cement bricks or red bricks clay bricks uh we use uh, material like uh, you know wall putty uh, painting uh, you know paints we use you know plumbing pipes we use uh, electrical uh, products like lights and geysers and fans and you know tiles and bath fittings and modular furniture right so you can think of all of these product categories are one form of the other construction material so as in from market um we are in manufacturing in pretty much in all of these product categories barring a one or two product categories where we are not uh, a, a primary producer but um we are largely a manufacturer um providing construction material to our customers now let's look at customers right which is the other side of the ecosystem one side of the ecosystem is about supply right the other right. side of the ecosystem is the demand you know in terms of demand our customers you can broadly segment into uh three parts one is um uh contractors and builders you know real estate developers large contractors because construction material gets consumed uh, not just in real estate it also is consumed in a lot of infrastructure industry like you know, road construction bridges construction metro construction railway construction irrigation dams so a lot of infrastructure core infrastructure development of the country also happens through um, you know various contractors and obviously they need construction material as well right mm-hmm. so we supply construction material to um, you know such uh, contractors we supply construction material to um, real estate uh, builders who are residential real estate developers or commercial real estate developers so that is one section of our uh, b2b customer base right okay. now the large second set of customer base is uh, people like you and me consumers right so we also would consume a lot of construction material but we don't directly go and buy most construction material it's not like anything else uh, we let's say if you are looking in the if we are looking to buy your fashion retail 
uh, you would probably go and buy at a retail store or you'd buy online but whereas in construction material though you're building a house you know you normally have someone else to buy material for you right because of the complexity of the you know uh, you might not have the technical know how to understand the quality of the material or what material you should be used for what purpose so you might engage uh, other experts whether an architect or a professional contractor or an interior designer there are different kind of professionals that you would engage and these professionals would help you make the right choices in terms of buying the right construction material right some of these are uh, consumer focused for example paint right now as a consumer you would want to get involved in the decision making process because you want a particular shade of a paint or you may want a certain texture or you may want a particular finish so you have a certain uh, expectation in mind when it comes to that uh, similarly with tiles with uh, modular kitchens modular furniture uh, similarly with uh, lighting you know you want a specific type of a lighting which is more emulating your style or uh, lifestyle uh, so there are certain product categories where the consumer is deeply involved whereas another product category where you know what exact grade of cement to use what exact grade of steel to use now we might not have enough technical knowledge to be able to make choices but we may be consulted because of cost reasons the contractor might say this will be more expensive this will be little expensive or this will be mid range so we might get involved in the process but net net as a consumer we have a certain uh, dependency on certain other providers right yeah so i just wanted to know when you when you talk about all these you know managing construction and supply chain and addressing roses i just wanted to know like how infra market manages the construction supply chain because this when we talk about this market construction business it's all about supply chain right and it right, needs to right. be there very bifurcation needs to be there it needs to be pretty much 100% sorted and all of, obviously there are multiple challenges you and related to loss and inefficiency so how do you tackle with those, all these problems in between so um first thing is um, you know in a, in a supply chain uh, you know connecting all the dots right how um, the manufacturers how the finally the consumers of making the material being consumed at a construction site there are so many players in between you know it could be logistics it could be you know certain kind of material or um, um, you know inventory led as well because you need to manufacture keep it in an inventory in a warehouse and then you supply from a warehouse some material is not of that kind you know for example concrete is a perishable product you would have to manufacture and consume it within you know few hours from the time it's manufactured so it is not homogeneous the very nature of construction material ecosystem is not um is is very very uh, distinct based on product you know material type and second is construction material ecosystems or uh, supply chains need to be closer to construction site as well, right but at the same time a lot of times the a um, lot of times the construction material uh, is and sourced from a natural product i mean it's available wherever it is available it's a geologically it's available only in certain locations so you need to find a way to make sure that particular product is transported till the time where it is consumed to the site where it is consumed and everything that needs to happen provide transparency in this right so it means that technology plays a huge role you know so far in this industry largely people have been depending on manual processes of communication Right. keeping yeah. keep talking about where is my truck at this point in time right yeah. uh, i booked a truck load of uh, something you know could be tiles now where is exactly the uh, materials uh, that uh, the tiles that i i have uh, placed an order for now largely you are dependent on somebody else in this ecosystem to communicate to you where exactly is my uh, order for tiles right so there are a lot of other domains which have solved this problem you know whether it is groceries whether it is uh, um e-commerce in different domains now construction material also has to catch up to that game and it is possible to do it but it requires this foundational layers need to be built first before we can solve those complexities so while i was doing my homework i have seen in your website you have mentioned about you know powering construction through tech tech right like bit we have retailer app then in store we are tech that i was pretty much fascinated about so i just wanted to know your views how has you know this tech transformed the construction industry and what unique perspective does the organization in from market brings that that helped in this transformation is there anything new that one should know that you are doing so uh, since you brought about um, you know we are 
you know specifically consume as a consumer um i was talking earlier in in the intro introduction uh, section as well let's say as a consumer i would like to be involved in uh, the decision making process of uh, this construction material right Absolutely. now and largely we are dependent on others but given the very nature of uh, home is a very emotional thing for most people right it's very right. important I'm going to live there for probably my rest of my life and my family should be involved in the decision making process of what choices are we making now today technology has to facilitate that selection process right and that's where opportunity for augmented reality mixed reality virtual reality whatever is the xr you know in terms of realities um have a huge role to play in enabling the consumer making the right choices not just for aesthetic purposes but also for for the purpose of let's say uh, cost and applicability now hey you are making a choice of a material whether it is applicable uh, for that purpose that you are choosing okay not just for look and feel practicality should be used cost should be considered um supply chain capabilities is it available in stock or not just exactly like a fashion retail not every design that we see could be available in stock it could be out of stock nobody is manufacturing it now it is available it's only two boxes of tiles are available but i need for my house maybe 10 boxes right so all of these facets need to be considered so that the user makes a right choice if we keep them disconnected yes i made a good design choice aesthetically but it is not possible that's not supply chain doesn't have it or the cost is prohibitive right so as a consumer anything that brings all of this together is a, is a, is this technology can play a perfect role there right because technology can bring all of this together it's possible right, right. there's something more of a agile you know solutions that you have brought in your company and again the follow up question would be like Uh, whenever the the employee or maybe an employee comes in you know how do you ensure these because you need to educate your you know peers right the your employees and when it comes to because making this agile process is not very easy to understand especially in the construction business right the synergy that you have to bring from a tech perspective as well as from the operations perspective the merge is very difficult i wanted to know how do you manage the learning or maybe i should say the education for or your employees to see forefront or maybe to to cope up that you know to be on that same level of this to practice the agile methodology so um i mean great point you used already the key word there which is education right so uh, and educating users um whether they are uh, you know employees whether they are any kind um starts first with a very clear intent of educating and uh, largely what we do to our uh, tech uh, you know engineering team members or any tech team members whether it is a product designer uh, whether it is a product manager you know, it is very hard for them to understand this complex you know construction material domain it's very rare to find uh, ready made uh, people who already understand the domain right. so they will come from different walks of life somebody might have worked on a fintech uh, before somebody might have worked on edutech or health tech insurance tech you know different areas of background they might have so one of the key principles that we have is uh, provide experiential learning in the sense like we ask them to actually go to a, a ready mix concrete plant understand exactly what's happening right um go to a warehouse of how construction material uh, is actually being stored it's not it's not same as oh i've done i've seen other warehouses so it's okay but different you know a, a, a set of pipes um uh the plumbing pipes are kept in a very different way tiles are kept in a different way you know uh, cp fittings are kept in a different way uh because some of these are breakable right so they you know sanitary wear um, is breakable tiles are breakable so you need to be careful with how do you manage them whereas pipes are you know long and they need they need space in a different way so including the way you can visualize a warehouse would change uh when you actually make a visit and look at how construction material warehouses are different from other warehouses right um construction material uh, storefront we have our own stores um we ask our team members to go visit a store spend few days in the store um go talk to the users at a store understand what consumers are expecting to find um uh, in the form of technology at a store uh through our virtual experience zone what so i think the question is about learning through 
um, experiencing and looking at the users in a, their operating environment, right, um, is the key for a faster, better, you know, no amount of video training, uh, online training would help them. Of course, can be reinforced, but actually going and making a visit is much, much better and it will be very, very uh, you know, long retention exists there. Yeah, but again, if you will see, I just, this might be again a follow-up question. As a CTO, maybe a decision making, you involved in the decision making process of choosing any particular tech or maybe any particular software or, you know, any particular matrices, right? How do you approach the decision making process for maybe selection of any software or maybe any tech solutions? So uh, largely a fairly common sense approach. We we look at it as say first is um, we understand the requirements. Let's say technology has to be um, an enabler. So technology has to uh, solve a business problem. So first and foremost is uh, having a good understanding of the business problem that we are trying to solve is important. Now, secondly, we will um, uh, shortlist or identify a set of tech um, stacks or tech uh, you know, uh, solutions that are possible for us, uh, which can solve this particular problem. So we convert our requirements into a simple checklist to say, hey, how do we evaluate technology, right? Okay. Now, we will try. Normally, we don't just go lock, stock and barrel, adopt a technology and let's go all out and do it. So we'll actually follow a simple principle of let's try it in a very small uh, scale. You know, we, we will carve out a small use case, uh, we'll go identify and we'll actually try to take it end to end, you know, ship it all the way till production, operate it in production, right? Now, there could be situations and, you know, end user wise, they might not know what technology are you using, right? End user should not be really uh, be bothered about, hey, there are a lot of complex pieces of technology that are operating to solve my problem. Right. So at any given point in time, there could be two different technologies trying to solve the same use case, but end user shouldn't be bothered. So there could be things there and there could be A-B testing that could be happening yeah. there. Yeah, um, so we, are, you know, we, are, we are doing a lot of uh, metrics and observability uh, wiring being done to understand the performance, cost benefit, uh, scalability, security. A lot of these data collection is happening behind the scenes okay. during this whole trial process, right? Now, once the trial is done and we got some good metrics out of this whole thing, then we'll say, okay, let's now, um, you know, adopt this or put it on hold. Like, no, this tech is not ready. Uh, we're not ready to swap our existing tech with this. So let's put, put it on hold. Maybe let's revisit the same thing in maybe two releases uh, later. Um, maybe the tech is much more ready right now, right? So we, we follow a very simple, you know, which is a, I'm sure everybody who is following some framework or the other. The client has, like, definitely. But um, again, sir, there are some couple of questions, more of a tech perspective. I just wanted to ask because we have already discussed about the VR tech, but there is this new term that is coming that I saw coming out of coming in the trend, maybe a couple of months back that is 3D printing. I just wanted mm -hmm. to know, are people really, you know, adopting the 3D printing based construction sites as we have seen there is one i guess post office that has been built in bangalore using entire building has been 3d printed right so how is people's traction about all these 3d printed equipment maybe it can be a simple section a simple very small part of their all the whole the of entire site but are people really inclined about, from the 3d printing perspective how is the market going so um, if you are if the very nature of you are able to give only a few examples and the fact that we are still talking about um, this is a, a viable technology or not, I think uh, it is an early stage, right? It is still early stage. Um, it hasn't truly firmly left the um, institutions or you know academics to come into mainstream, right? In, in terms of its adoption today. But lot of things is a fundamentally uh, because of awareness let us say you know let's say if i built a, a 3d printed house how many consumers are happy to go and live there right are yeah. they very comfortable you. do you think that because you know everything starts from that context of it right so yeah. so that means it's not that it says nobody says it's unsafe or it's anything it's a question of fundamentally consumer and the customer are the real person's awareness right their awareness, their confidence. You know, if I give an another analogy to it, there was a time where people were very really uncomfortable making online transactions. Right. Banking. There was probably 20 years ago, if somebody said that, no, it's, oh, it's not secure, I'll be very uncomfortable. Uh, but today, we are not 
we are not so i mean we just take our app and then do a upi transaction right yes so you can change it all even every small you vendor look at the transformation of what was uh, considered as a very um, you know unsecure way of would i ever do financial transactions online would i ever do banking online 20 years ago somebody would have said oh no no it's not going to be that but i'm saying is it's yeah. a question of awareness mainstream adoption will change and there is a the whole industry ecosystem needs to come together to make it because there's no two ways about it it's going to make um, it will bring a lot of efficiencies right it will bring uh, so many efficiencies but uh, will it be at a tipping point yeah it might take a while to get to the tipping point moving ahead i just wanted to frame it from a unique lessons that you might have you know because you are because it's many it's been so long that you are working in the industry i just wanted to check what are some unique lessons you have maybe learned so far after being involved in the construction business and how maybe sometimes these challenges make you learn a lots of things so how these challenges helped you in building something very new or in coming up with something innovative so one thing um, i've learned like a lot of times people do ask me during interview stages of when we are hiring new engineering or tech talent right so i'll say what is the technology got to do with construction material industry you know a lot of times people outside in uh, won't understand probably a few years ago probably out my my perception would have been very similar right? right so but once you get to see it in close quarters once you get to see the industry uh, this phenomenal uh, amount of opportunity first thing if you ask me what is the lesson i've learned is this industry is uh, uh, you know can significantly benefit through uh, technology right um has a huge value to add in improving many things for example uh timeliness of deliveries right so a lot of times people say they'll assume that construction projects are always delayed they always cost more money right some of these assumed and accepted uh realities can be challenged but it takes a lot of ground work to do it right some nice. of the fundamental work needed to be done is create this transparency you know you asked an earlier question on how supply chain supply chain inefficiencies cause contribute a lot right so digitization and connecting all the players in the construction material supply chain with the visibility that they need for whatever they need only right don't have to give them uh, a very open access of course it has to be secure it has to be trans you know uh, a reliable platform so creating that transparency will fundamentally go a long way and uh, what i've understood is the construction material uh, supply chain is not um, not uniform you know it is very very uh, you know heterogeneous um what uh, supply chain works for ready mix concrete wouldn't work for plumbing wouldn't work for steel wouldn't work for tiles wouldn't work for modular kitchen right right, right? so all of these are different examples right so we can't say it's all one size fits all approach so the complexity of technology is not based on number of transaction not like a b2c transaction it's not like there are going to be a billion users going to be using the system or a, you know 100 million users going to use it so the complexity is not going to come from in this industry it's not going to come from the scale of users it's the complexity of this ecosystem is what is to be solved in this industry right so that's a lesson learned so that means we have to have good architectural principles software technology architecture principles need to be available to solve this particular problem what worked for a b2c would not work here so it's a very different ball game when it comes down to it so these are some lessons learned and our architecture is baked in those principles so that we are ready to solve these problems as opposed to borrow the principles from some other industry yeah definitely 100% i agree with all the points that you have mentioned now maybe this might be a little bit irrelevant but there is a union of real estate and the construction business i wanted to know if you will see in the market most of the so that's per, my personal experience all these online real estate platforms have their own set of challenges right and they are pretty much struggling right now in the market you know of post covid also during the covid time the situation are totally adverse for them but now post covid also i have seen they are pretty much struggling and it's been a very tough time for all of them what do you think what can be the probable reason for all these you know real estate businesses that are coming trying to go into the market online i i think um, it, it's a disruption cycle 
so when things just disrupt to set back into the regular rhythm it will take a while uh, but that disruption also presented a lot of opportunities right that also presented opportunities which were not um, anticipated before um, okay. so people need to be ready to adopt saying uh, how could we um, uh, do manufacturing also of construction material um, in a in a post covid world right uh, in a post covid world how do we do um, sales you know simple uh construction material sales is largely high touch sales right now post covid how can we rethink about uh, you know construction material uh, sales right consumers uh, people like you and me want to make uh, design choices um how could post covid world uh, how could we use technology to drive um consumer making better choices right all of these things uh, will force us to innovate opportunity is there for us to innovate those who innovate will quickly find a a great uh, you know cycle of uh, you know cycle of success because there are some really core challenges that were created uh, during covid and then if we remember those and then make sure we are not uh, victim to the same issues if they happen in future i think we'll be ready for that yeah so now maybe the last question could be as we are reaching to the end of this podcast i would like to know what has been how has been your experience working in the industry and what advice you will give to you know up the freshers who are coming into this market trying to bring some impact in the market and trying their hands on with tech as well as with the you know construction business what should they learn and how the, what could be the possible point they can start from few things one applies to any domain um you know generically if you are if you are a, a, a in a new entrant into the technology space and i'll talk about technology from that point of view um if you are a new entrant into technology space uh develop um a depth in some place you know be be good in one thing for sure right if you are a if you are a front end guy develop deep expertise in front end right develop deep expertise in let's say if you are a core data structure database uh don't be sticking only to one type of databases right let's say relational um, columnar data graph data you know different understand different ways to store and organize data develop deep expertise everything to do with data because data use cases are very different so develop not just expertise in one kind but develop a, be a good data expert right a good microservices api expert right so when i say expert it's not just about programming it's about operational in terms of let's say how do i run things in production how do i operate this in production how do i automate how do i measure observability of everything right the observability at a front end the observability of a microservice the observability at a database are all different things right understand deep about observability in all of these contexts right so develop be a good expert in you know be inquisitive learn everything to learn about don't just be a consumer of apis be inquisitive open the hood understand the inner workings of the tech stack that you're using right this is one thing but also develop some breadth don't be like okay i'm a i'm a deep guy but i have no idea what the other things are it doesn't stop let's say if i'm a front end uh, expert but i also should have some understanding of other areas of tech stack right? right um i should be able to know um you know how does the uh, how how exactly a generative ai algorithm behind the scenes working the what are the inner workings of uh, a gpt4 uh, you know platform right so even though you might not know the internal mathematics of a gpt type program you know a gpt type algorithm but you should be able to know sufficiently enough can't be a, just a novice right so i call them as t shaped you know so have some breadth have some depth that's but very- choose your depth you know choose your depth be very good good at go deep in that depth so that you become almost an expert in that space you know when you go to a team you will get an identity by being your depth other people should be able to come and say hey oh microservice just go to this guy he will be giving you any, he can give you any question any answer to this right oh right. you are looking for graph databases here yeah, go to this guy right you should be able to earn your identity in any team through your expertise it that has got nothing to do with years of experience because 
you know, many of the technologies are born on the last few years you know any guy who's been 15 years in the industry doesn't cannot say i have 15 years experience in that industry right, right. because most of these are born in the last few years so this is one uh, guidance that anybody who's coming in second is related to domain knowledge right you if you want to solve problems of a domain don't be a generalist be very very you know understand the users have empathy for your users you know i keep telling examples of say if you are solving for a um, um a, a factory uh, person who's working at a factory in one of our factories right one of our manufacturing facilities go to that manufacturing facility understand what do they do in their day every day now if you're building technology for them you cannot build technology for them by sitting in your air conditioned room absolutely you have to go to their place understand what they're doing and then do it now these two are what make you a great engineer because you want to solve for your users problems second is you want to really have deeper control on the technology so that you know how to solve right so i would say if you focus on these two anybody can become a great engineer so i just, i'm just circling back to the the first advice that you gave and it might be a little bit contrary but i would like to know you know when someone is everyone likes to switch and grow because if in, in any particular exam there is there is a limited growth right Pete? there are so many folks working on the same at the same point but if we are switching the organization we see often that the tech stick that we are using the t shape that you have mentioned again there might be a case where you know we move that organ a particular organization won't find the same similarity or maybe won't be using the same tech stack that we are right now working on or having, having the deep expertise so did you say uh so by here do you think like we should try to apply to those organizations where we should like how to get to know about these particular organizations that i if i know front end part absolutely like microservices what other who are the other companies are working in that space because company hardly disclose the microsoft based their tech stack part and everything right so how to get that thing? see i think um most spaces if your uh, foundation principles are strong right programming languages don't matter right architectural patterns also evolve right, right? so a microservice is an architectural pattern right right not to say that um Uh, there were no um, you know remote procedure calls existing in you know way back when unix was uh, you know dominating the industry right so when so i would say uh, there are paradigms that exist the architectural patterns have evolved to make things better right but having said that if your core foundation principles of computer science the way processes work how communication happens between things you can build on top of it. right so you don't you need to be able to say there are things that you want to unlearn and they want to replace that with some new learnings right maybe you were a service oriented architecture um you know soap api kind of a guy right you know, uh, maybe yeah okay you know there were certain principles but as things evolved there are things that you can unlearn and they can actually replace it with learning right right so having that flexibility to do it rather than saying that i want to only choose um companies that develop their microservices in golang then that will restrict your opportunity sphere right so you want to be able to build microservices in different stacks it could be you know your core competency could be in javascript your core competency could be in python your core competency could be in any another programming language but right. as long as your foundation principles the architectural patterns and paradigms don't shift suddenly just because you are using a new programming language that's very nice advice from you that's coming from you sir and thank you for your time absolutely i loved it and the final two pieces of advice that you shared with us that's that's like a gem for us and thank you for all these knowledge that you have shared with us and we'll try to you know uh, build some more possible synergies and we'll try to talk more due to paucity of time we are just we have to end this podcast here thank you for joining this podcast it's my pleasure to host you sir sure thank you actually uh, my pleasure too um, and uh, good luck thanks thank you so much bye